Hello and welcome to Let's Plant Recap. This is the show where I look at your comments from the past episode and react to them. So we're looking at episode 94 which is what do I do after the head cuttings have rooted and I've got lots of comments here. I, I guess it was a timely topic. Anyway, the first comment is from Susan B. Who needs a reminder? Well, I guess this is in reference to my uh, decision of using a premiere because with the premiere it tells you exactly when uh, when the video is about to come out to publish and it, it gives you a countdown timer I think and you could opt in with the notification so you get notified when it when exactly it comes out and you would get a reminder a few minutes before it starts yeah I guess if you've been watching this for quite a while now then you would know exactly when I publish a new video but for those who are new to the channel this might be a bit useful the, the reminder per se would be useful for those who are new to the channel but the premiere function itself after doing the poll recently asking about moving uh, the let's plant publish date right now there's an overwhelming vote on yes and yes being uh, the premiere should be done on the weekend there's still a significant number of viewers who chose the third option which is do not use premieres so I think we're going to test out uh, a weekend premiere for the next couple of videos and see how we go if it does not work out that well I guess I'll keep the schedule for the weekend but I may or may not drop the premiere function you know you could always do a reminder or a teaser on my community tab by posting a photo of the poster which I usually do advance but in any case let's see how it goes Next is from Marites G. Nice video. From Jeff, you tease. We can see the seed propagator but didn't get the, to see the results so far. I guess we'll have to wait. I guess we'll have to watch the next video. Only fun, kind of. Yeah, at the time that I at the time that Jeff wrote this comment, I haven't pushed out a follow-up an update video, but a few days later, after this comment, I I published. I think you've seen it yesterday or two days ago yeah a few days ago basically so there was an update there are lots of new sprouts some cells died but another cell has activated and as for this one this is the new batch I've sowed this very recently so let's hope this works from Nora Bascos I live in Northern California and rainy season is nearing not sure if you talk about succulents during this season, will the plants die? Thank you so much to Erin S and Natalie Moore for responding to Nora. I agree with what both of them have commented so far and to add, what I did was post a rather long comment. So if you're, if you want to have a look, then just hop onto the comment section. But basically what I said was that uh, during the rainy season, if you have a if you have a particularly large amount of rainfall then you have to prepare your soil or prepare your garden bed appropriately the main points I discussed here were the physical preparation of the garden bed I've uh, linked a video as well and the second would be considering, considering the temperatures and the second bit is important because it tells you when the plants are dormant or not I'm pretty sure you've heard about this about the dormancy thing so some plants uh, stop growing at a certain period for instance, Echeverias are growing during the warmer months, so during winter they would slow down or stop all growth and you wouldn't want to water them as much during that time. So if it rains more during that period, then you'll have to make sure that the rain, the water does not, is not retained or it just flows away. That way the Echeverias do not sit in wet, they do not sit with wet feet, they do not sit in water for longer than they need to. From Karen Lothering. Wow, my one stump have so many pups, I lost count. <laughs> and I used a short Fred Ive stump to hold up a plant that kept falling over, and that stump also has pups now. <laughs> yeah, the Fred Ives gives you a lot of pups. So, yeah, good for you. So happy for you. From CC. Yes, very windy today. From 101 Life. I just discovered your channel by chance. Are you running a nursery? What a collection love it i so happened to have two varieties given by my neighbor who is getting rid who's getting tired of gardening hmm. may, i may want to get more it starts with one or two then 
Mm. <laughs> and regarding your question, no, I'm not a nursery, but at this rate, I might turn into one. <laughs> I'm just a private collector like most of you, but I sell some of my excess plants. That way, I could fund this addiction even further. But right now, most of my earnings go into uh, gear upgrades, camera, and whatever accessories. Photography and videography is another hobby of mine, and I'd really like to be able to raise my production value for this channel. And I think that's one way to differentiate my channel from others, because I fool around with my camera a lot. and. Yeah, pretty much it. This hobby is expensive. <laughs> From Iza Zidlauska. Chuck, you have a veritable pop factory. And it's going to expand even more. Mm -hmm. And all of the stumps. From Mariana Budiman. Am I saying it right? Hi Chuck, thank you for your informative and fun videos. Is it worth just to wait until near the growing season for a particular succulent to do head chop? I was not sure to do anything in the dormant season. I live in the northern Canada and the winter is pretty harsh. Most of my succulents are indoors all year long. You would definitely want to leave out any chopping or replanting until when you're in the growing season because any cuts, any breakage, any damage that you make would not regrow, would not recover. So try to hold out until your springtime. From SusiePie11, another great video, Chuck. Thank you. From Eleni Maragos, great videos always. I bought an Echeveria Dix Pink today in windy Melbourne's north. Can I be head now or wait until the start of spring next year? So I asked for a photo and Eleni uh, gave me a link to one. And from the looks of it, it doesn't seem like the Dix Pink, the plant that she have is mature enough. It's still quite young, so I advise against chopping it yet. Besides it's growing season now, I wouldn't want to let it miss out on some of that growing period and also with very young stumps the nodes are far apart which means that there's not much pops to there's not enough there's not you're not going to get much pops anyway so yeah just focus on that plant that you have let it grow maybe wait until the stem the main stem becomes so thick and maybe and maybe consider doing the head chop next year instead from Blue Dragon 564 My head cuttings wound always turns black but I'm not even putting it in the soil nor watering it. Any thoughts? It's a type of Echeveria that not that sure about the name. So looks like you're experiencing rot, fungal rot. And there's generally two things that could cause that. The first would be maybe your cutting maybe your cutting equipment, your cutting tool, your knife or whatever you use to chop is not clean enough. And the second would be that maybe it is too humid where you are and maybe it is too humid where you kept it so it might be getting a bit wet which makes it easier for the microbes to enter the to enter the stem so for best results i think you might have to do some precautions the first would be making sure you disinfect your cutting tool and the second is to apply some antifungals on the on the chops so on the stump and on the head that way you minimize all risk of rot. That's all the comments on YouTube. Let me have a look on Facebook. Just loading now. There's a few comments here. The first one is from Gary and Rose. Great episode, Chuck. Thank you. And from Gracial Sari. Thank you, I've learned a lot. I'm so glad that you found this useful because uh, this is the entire point of the series. I want to share what I've learned with you. So, thank you. Apart from the seedlings update, I also released another video. It was uh, some sort of a demo reel. It was a result of my practicing with this new camera that I'm using now. I was using it for some motions. I don't have a stabilizer yet. I do have a monopod and I've been practicing with using, holding it as stable as I can. Yeah, there's a bit of shake in there somewhere, but it's not so bad considering. I'm still planning to get a stabilizer at some point. I'm just waiting for reviews. There's this particular one that I'm after and I'm waiting for more people to give their own opinions about it and see if it's worth the, worth the, worth the purchase. Oh so yeah, I'm geeking out right now. I'm 
consuming all of the resources, all of the articles, all of the reviews that I can because they're going out slowly now. The gimbal that I'm after has just released a couple of weeks ago, I think. So yeah, people are starting to get their hands on it and uh, I want to see more action shots. <laughs> As for the next episode, the next episode is a direct continuation of the previous one. So the previous one was talking about what to do with the head after they have started rooting and you know, things to do with the stump. The next episode would be expanding on a bit about what to do with the pups after they have grown. Specifically the question of when is the right time to separate the pups. I think that's something that many people keep asking so I figured it would be a good chance to address that problem. And like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm thinking of moving the Let's Plant series towards the weekend and I'm going to start a premiere. Immediately after publishing this video, I'm going to start a premiere so you know when exactly it would come out. I'm moving around my schedule so my recap would be my Saturday evening and the next episode would be Sunday morning. So it's about half a day difference. <laughs> so expect a lot of viewing, a lot of videos on the weekend this time. Oh, here's a preview of the next episode. This is an example of a pup with a long stem. This is an Echeveria Dix Pink. And I chopped it off from the parent plant very recently. I think it was just a few days ago. This was the length of the stem when I got it. As you can see, it's quite long. You can use it as is if you want. The stem is still fairly green, which means that it's going to be vigorous. If you want to give it the best chances to grow roots and be healthy, then you make sure to chop off closer to the plant because this part of the stem would be more vigorous. And that's it for the recap. Make sure to check out the premiere announcement. Make sure to get notified and subscribe if you haven't yet. And I'll see you tomorrow in the chat in the premiere. Bye.